Blessed Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's word. We pray in the name of Jesus that you bless your people, you transform lives in Jesus' mighty name, that God, you train us, oh God, that the way up is the way down. On our knees is how we climb in humility, in submission, in sacrifice. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you transform, you train our minds and our spirits to obey your will. In the name of Jesus, amen. Today, we are in episode three uh, on this series, The Secret Purpose and Power of Submission. I want to submit to you today on an amazing, incredible story. And this is David, uh, Abigail, and Nabel. An amazing story on this episode in the chapter 3 of the book we are looking at submitting to a dead tree. There is an alarming misconception in our generation today that you can hear young lady discussing I would rather be with a rich man that is abusive than be with a poor man that is abusive. You can't be in poverty and abusive. Uh, I would rather be rich with a rich man that is rich and uh, it doesn't matter what he does. Now, this is not a new discussion because this discussion we're looking at is the discussion in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Uh, Nabel, Abigail and David have this scenario where we find Nabal as the rich man, very cruel, wicked and evil, <laughs> married to an amazing, beautiful woman, an intelligent woman, the Bible says, Abigail. And we can read in that an, an amazing display of a rich man that is abusive, that is arrogant, full of pride, and he cares about no one but himself and his well-being. And David has submitted to this man by taking care of his servants at some point and his goods and ships and camels. David and his men have done that. And they are now requesting uh, some assistance in that regard. And the story plays out as you might read it, as you may know it, the reply from Nabal, the most wealthy man and wicked, rough, and evil, the Bible says. That brings us to our discussion today, submitting to a dead tree. How do I begin to know what am I submitting to? This tree will not bear much fruit. Because submission is a very spiritual element that is designed for oneself to water his or her life into someone watering out of your belly shall flow levers of living waters and that levers of living waters you pour into the man as submission as a sacrifice as surrender and it's in that state that you are pouring your life your water of life into this tree but it looks like it's a dead tree it's a dead tree. There is nothing in return. Jesus is walking and is hungry and he finds a tree and he says, this, this is the season this tree is supposed to produce the fruit. And there was nothing on the tree and he curses the tree. And the following day the tree withers and dies to symbolize that you have received the sacrifice 
sunshine, you have received the rain, but you have refused to bear fruit. Therefore, you might look good, green, and all you have, but you are a dead tree. Therefore, you don't deserve to live. He curses the tree and the tree withers and dies. So there are people around us that look good. They have the money. They have the wealth. Uh, but they are not bearing the fruit. You can be a very successful failure. Like Nabal. Nabal is a very wealthy failure. And his end of life is as such. Because as much as Abigail has submitted intelligent, wise, beautiful, amazing woman to this tree that looks wealthy, but in terms of purpose and calling, this tree is dead. You might find yourself in a situation where you are submitting to a leader, a boss, a husband, but you know at this point there is no purpose, there is no vision, there is no direction. As much as by default there is money, there is wealth in this context. But this is a dead tree. This is a dead tree because submission is spiritual. When you submit there must be a spiritual nourishment, growth, spiritual growth, mental growth, financial growth, holistic of your life, emotional growth. When you are pouring out yourself to someone, therefore it's imperative to understand where the place where you are at. Is it, you might be wealthy, there might be money, there might be resources, but is it a person that is leaving a purpose and the will of God for their life? It's in this mindset that we are enlightened that all we have in this earth, money, cars, houses, someday, the car you drive, somebody else will drive it. The house you live in, there used to be somebody, you might have built it, but somebody else will live inside. The rings you have, the clothes you have, someone else at some point, they're going to collect it. Maybe the woman you have or the man you have, at some point, someone else is going to have that person. Now it's you and I to begin to see that we are in alignment with that which is the will of God and the purpose of God for our lives. That we are submitting and pouring our lives and the water, the living water out of our bellies to a tree that can bear fruits for us, for you, for your children and for your community. How can I then know that the tree that I'm pouring myself into is a dead tree? The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. John 8, 32. And it's in the context of the principle of the truth. If the values, the values of a human soul are not aligned with the spiritual truth, with the context in which God would have loved you to steer, then you begin to see that there are some errors, something is missing somewhere. You have everything in the house. The money and everything else, the life, but some there is still a void in you. And it begins to alight you. Here are signs. I'm going to give you some signs to know whether this is a dead tree. 
If a person knows the truth and choose to do the opposite continuously, not once or not twice, they know the truth, they have the principle, somebody has talked to them, somebody has counseled them, advised them, and, and brought them into guidance into a certain direction, and they continuously, perpetually, constantly decide to do the opposite. That is first sign that tells you maybe I'm submitting to a dead tree. Second, through prayer, God can reveal in dreams and other words several times that this person is a dead tree. When you pray to God, when you pray to God with an open heart, God can show you in dreams, in actions, in visions, and there will be some level of spiritual confirmation that this is a dead tree that you are pouring yourself into. Number three, when you both are competing in doing evil in the house, revenge and unforgiveness, you have seen couples and people one does something wrong and the other one repeats evil for evil. You cheated, I cheat. You lied, I lied. The moment you begin to see that both of you are competing in doing evil, then maybe you're both dead trees. Hmm. Number four. Irreconcilable differences. Lack of compatibility in purpose, in calling, and spiritual alignment purpose calling and spiritual alignment and I, I don't want to put these in reconcilable differences in terms of cliches ah uh, you you like coke i like fanta no these are cliches clothes or food no the irreconcilable differences here have to be centered on purpose calling spiritual alignment observed over years that this person is not aligned to your purpose is not aligned to your calling and abigail and nabel gives us a best example though they were married for how many years we may not know but we see that there was no alignment between the two that here was a woman intelligent wise beautiful hardworking and here's a man wealth rich hardworking but away from the will of god irreconcilable differences number five being driven by selfishness pride and human philosophy ideologies over the principles of god the moment a person is driven by human philosophies, pride, selfishness, arrogance, rather than the principles of God, then it is a dead tree. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You begin to observe for these red flags. You are not compelled to submit to a dead tree. For God says we should submit unto authority that when we submit we make their work easier and in return our lives are made easier because they are in service for our interest. That is the alignment in which God allows us to submit. These are just red flags that you should be able to observe submitting to a dead tree yes these are red flags that God has given for us to be able to know that you are not meant to submit blindly you are not meant to submit blindly be it you are in a situation where there is poverty there is wealth Authentic submission is submission pouring yourself. For a man is a seed and a woman is the soil. So 
when the good seed meets the good soil they must be harvest they must be multiplication they must be goodness therefore if in a man the seed is rotten even if there's a good soil as good as Abigail beautiful attractive intelligent the seed will never have its harvest if the seed is good has as good if the womb the soil is a barren soil the soil which is the indication of the womb of a woman the life of a woman it's a barren soil it becomes difficult to have uh, a multiplication to have an harvest therefore what and who where are you pouring your sacrificial submission your sacrificial water out of your belly out of your soul where are you pouring your spiritual sacrifices is it a dead tree or a good tree is it a good soil or a bad soil a tree is from a seed but there's a need for a soil the a danger is if one is rotten or the the soil is barren that is uh, the failure of alignment incompatibilities irreconcilable differences it's very imperative to know and to understand that as we go through the series of submission it's for our own good our own elevation there will be no promotion without submission there will be no spiritual enlightenment without submission there will be no power and exposure without submission there will be no depth of the knowledge and the wisdom that comes from God unless we are broken down into submission that we are broken as a soil into the potter's hand and it begins to reshape and redesign because within our lives as clay there are cracks and therefore the clay uh, the soil is so gentle in the hands of the potter that he molds and shapes it into design a perfect vessel in which he desires for his own glory for his own purpose for we are meant as a purpose and vessels in the hands of God therefore our submission unto God is to bring that alignment that alignment that to be immortals to live in the realms of gods beyond the flesh beyond the carnality beyond these material things is to be broken down in humility in sacrifice in surrender so that we can be elevated to a higher position you might be a dead tree you might be a barren soil you might be a rotten seed and those who have been pouring into you have come to the day then but there is hope you are hearing this because God is ready to revive you. God is ready to return you back to him. God is saying, I am ready right now. Out of this valley of dry bones, I shall prophesy. I will speak a word and the flesh will come back to the bones and the will breathe into the flesh and it will be an army. God saved me today to prophesy into your life. If you are a dead seed, 
and you people have poured into you and you seem to be producing a dead tree God is saying through your humility your submission your life is being revived through that word I prophesy to you there will be a financial resurrection there will be marriage resurrection there will be power resurrection there will be love resurrection in your marriage in your workplace in your family God says I prophesy right now that there is a resurrection there is a resurrection you are coming back and they shall be an harvest you will not die and remain a dead tree I speak into your life right now may you come back to life I speak life over you your finance your family your children your finances in the name of Jesus receive restoration receive resurrection as you submit to God total submission and you say God reform me reshape my character reshape my attitude reshape my spirit break the yoke in the name of Jesus receive restoration receive power receive resurrection receive life you will no longer be called a dead tree but you shall be a tree a tree of life a tree that produces life that whoever eats a fruit from you shall have internal life shall have internal life your children out of your spiritual fruits the fruits of the spirit love goodness gentleness kindness they shall eat of your fruits and they shall have internal life out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters and whoever drinks of you shall have internal life in the name of Jesus you are a vessel of God an instrument of God and the life of God is flowing through you right now right now in Jesus name in Jesus name in the name of Jesus receive resurrection resurrection in Jesus name amen God bless you. Contact us for prayer as we are doing this series in submission. You shall not be called a dead tree, but a tree that gives life. Shalom, shalom.